Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 164, the power of using inverse operations to subtract and divide. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the Recovering Traditionalist and BuildMathMinds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Before we get into the episode, this week's positivity comes from the Build Math Minds Facebook group yet again. We have over 76,000 people in that group, and it is a place for you to ask questions about the teaching and learning of math and to ask advice for activities to get your students engaged with mathematics. Annalise Record manages the group for me, and she does a great job of kicking out those spammers. No one's allowed to post about their product, and if they do, that's when they get kicked out. They can suggest a product in the comments if it fits what people are asking about, but the group is meant for educators to crowdsource answers to their questions. And in this post by Tracy, she was looking to get advice from other educators who had quote unquote defronted their classrooms. And if you're not familiar with defronting, it basically, that's the typical style of teaching where the teacher is at the front of the classroom and kids are like in their desks and columns and rows uh, and everybody's looking up at the front at the teacher. And so a lot of teachers are starting to move to defront their classroom. So I decided to share this post with you guys because I'd love to see educators helping other educators. Often in schools, we are afraid to ask advice with the others that are in our building because maybe it's hard to put yourself out there, or you might be in a school where there are no other teachers who are trying to teach the way you are, right? This defronting the classroom, not everybody wants to do that. But if you come into a group with over 76,000 educators, you're going to find some who have been doing it and can give you advice. So I'm so thankful that the Build Math Minds group is a place where educators feel safe safe to ask their questions and seek out advice. If you aren't a part of the Build Math Minds Facebook group, you can join by going to facebook.com slash groups slash build math minds. All right. Well, next weekend on April 14th, that is our math strategy session where Rosalba Serrano will be exploring how to help kids develop and use the inverse operation strategy. Since December, we've been hosting these live sessions that explore the main four strategies that kids need to develop and use for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We only have the inverse operation strategy session left. And then in May, Rosalba is doing like a final session that wraps up the whole series and talks about some other like strategies that are kind of popular, but may not, you know, be lasting throughout all of time, but are kind of cool to explore sometimes. So if you haven't registered for the sessions, you do still have time to join us. Just go to buildmathminds.com slash strategy dash sessions. Um, but I'll also post that link on the show notes page, which is easier to remember. It's buildmathminds.com slash 164. So behind the buildmathminds.com is always just the episode number we are on. So this is episode 164. So you can get the, go there to get any of the links of things that I'm mentioning today. So since we are exploring the inverse operation strategy here in a week or so, I thought I'd share with you one of the first books that brought this idea to my attention. Inverse operation strategy is when you use the inverse operation to solve a problem. For example, if you see 15 minus 9, if you think what plus 9 would make the 15, you are using the inverse operation strategy. You are using addition to solve a subtraction problem. Now, some of you may be wondering why it took me reading a book to know about this strategy. But I'll remind you that I was a rule following child, and so I only solve problems the way that my teachers taught me to. When we were doing subtraction, we used addition, but it was only to check our work. After we solved a subtraction problem, we were made to then add that answer back to the bottom number of the subtraction problem 
And so that we could check to make sure that our answer was correct. Because if you take your answer and add it to that bottom number, you would get the top number. That's all I remembered of that. Um, we were never shown a why that works or B, that you could use addition to actually solve the problem. It was only ever seen as a way to check my work. Um, and again, some of you have known that forever and you saw the connection yourself. I did not see those connections. I needed help seeing that. And the help came in the form of these books. Now I'm going to pull a piece from the multiplication and division book, but it's very similar to the one that's in the addition and subtraction book, okay? So in the book, Mastering the Basic Math Facts in Multiplication and Division by Susan O'Connell and John San Giovanni, each chapter focuses on a type of multiplication fact, and in every chapter, they have a section about connecting it to division. So it's very similar in the addition subtraction book. They have a chapter for the like types of facts for addition, and then a section about connecting it to subtraction. Now, when I was in school, I learned my multiplication facts, and then later I learned the division facts. They were not connected. These books were published in 2011, and they were the first ones that I'd seen that really emphasized the connection between the inverse operations. Now, I'm not saying they were the first to do it. I'm just saying they're the first ones that I remember reading about and seeing. So the books were focused on helping kids master addition and multiplication, but while you're doing that, they encourage teachers to help students build the connection between addition subtraction and multiplication division. And in the first chapter where they start really talking about the types of multiplication facts, which is actually chapter two, it's multiplying by two. In the section about connecting to division on page 41, it states, as students develop an understanding of multiplication with two as a factor, take every opportunity to talk about the connection between multiplication and division facts. Students might be asked to talk about the similarities and differences between the following equations. Two times five equals 10, 10 divided by two equals five. Students might focus on the similarities in the numbers in each equation, e.g. they both have a two, five, and a 10 in them. They might state that they are part of a fact family, but pose questions that require students to delve more deeply into their thinking and explain their understanding of the equations. Colleen observed that if you have two groups of five, you get 10. But if you have 10 and you split it into two groups, there's five in each group. Megan added two times five is double five but 10 divided by two is splitting 10 in half. You might provide manipulatives so students can show the operations as they discuss their ideas or have the class act out the equations. Exploring the connections between the operations will help strengthen students' problem-solving skills as they deepen their understanding of the equations. Once students have a firm understanding of inverse operations and have gained fluency with their multiplication facts, they will be empowered by their expanded repertoire of division facts too. Then in the next chapter about multiplying by 10, there is a tip on page 53. It says, it is important for students to understand the concepts of multiplication and division. However, when the focus is on math fact fluency, remind students to think multiplication. Mastering multiplication facts and exploring fact families supports students' mastery of division facts. Throughout the book, they remind the reader that the job is to help students build their understanding of the concepts of multiplication and division, how those concepts connect together, and help kids with their mastery of the facts as they're building those connections. But building the connections between inverse operations isn't just for the facts, even though that's what the books are focused on. This idea helps students as they progress through all of their work with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. When students are working on problems like 2049 minus 1782, it might be easier for them to think addition and start at 1782 and add up to the 2049. 
And when they're doing division, especially long division, man, it is all about multiplication. All the strategies for division are heavily dependent upon students being fluent with multiplication. So no matter what grade level you teach, spend time helping your students build the connection between the inverse operations. If you need help with that, The books do help you for the basic math facts, but if you want to see how to help kids at all the elementary levels, get registered and join us for our strategy session on April 14th. This will explore the inverse operation strategy in depth through addition, subtraction, well, addition, subtraction together, multiplication, division together, but through whole numbers, small numbers, the facts, larger whole numbers, fractions, decimals, kids use this strategy no matter what they're doing, what number size they are doing throughout elementary and beyond. I still use it as an adult. So if you want to join us for that strategy session, again, go to buildmathminds.com slash strategy dash sessions, and I'll email you the link to join us. So make sure that you get that email. If not, email us, info at buildmathminds.com. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.